Welcome back to theCUBE everyone. Lisa Martin here on the ground in Las Vegas at Coupa Inspire 2022. This is our second day of coverage here. There's been about 2,400 to 2,500 folks at the event this year. People are ready to come back. Uh, I've been happy to talk with lots of Coupa folks, their partners, their customers, and I've got both a customer and a partner here with me. Heidi Banks joins us, the Senior Director of Global Procurement at Jabil. Heidi, Heidi, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Give the audience an overview of Jabil and what you guys do. So Jabil is a $30 billion manufacturing solutions partner um, that provides contract manufacturing services for 450 of the world's largest and most premier brands around the globe. Most people don't know our name, but we're the wonderful face behind the name. Well, you guys had, I was looking at some stats, over 260,000 employees across 100 locations. Very customer centric, you guys are, as is Coupa. There's good, obviously, synergy there, but you had some objectives from a global procurement perspective. What were those? What were some of the challenges that you wanted to solve? So about seven years ago, Jabo went on a journey to identify what challenges we had out in the indirect procurement space. Being such a large global company, we had no idea what we were spending on indirect at the time. Um, after a little bit of digging, we found out that we had over two billion in spend that was untapped from a category management perspective. And so we knew that we needed to grow as a company and buy technology as a foundation. Um, as our goal and our mission in the company is to be the most uh, technologically advanced manufacturer solutions partner for our customers. Was there any sort of one thing or compelling event seven years ago that caused you guys to go, we need to be really getting our hands around this indirect spend? So we started off by bringing in category managers and they were doing an amazing job delivering savings in our contracts, um, but we had no way to deliver that out to the company. And the company being so big and so many different jurisdictions and countries around the world, you could negotiate the best contract in the world, but if you couldn't communicate it out to your users, then it was a challenge to really capture that savings and make sure we were delivering bottom line savings to the company. And you guys are, we're talking about three different SAP ERP systems, so a, a lot of technology in, in the environment. What were some of the core technology requirements that Jabil had when it came looking for a business plan management solution? Yes, yeah, so we were looking for something that was very user friendly. Of course, Coupa ticks that box very well. Um, also, something that could drive governance and policy controls. Um, again, challenging being such a global organization and making sure that things were going according to our policy into our global category managers to be sourced and negotiated for the company. Um, we looked for one that was end to end from a business spend management platform perspective. We wanted something that was integrated and could cover three ERP systems from one pane of glass across the company. So we could get great analytics without having to search in so many different places. That, that is so key. I was talking with Rob, I was talking with Raj, and they were all talking about how those silos still exist and how they're helping organizations like Jabil break those down and give them that single pane of glass, as you mentioned, to be able to see to get that visibility into indirect spend, for example. Um, talk to me about the solutions that you implemented from Coupa. So we started off with uh, Coupa's procure to pay system. Um, really our focus was to get off of our old system as quickly as we could and get everyone managing on the same policy controls, approval flows. Um, we then also had uh, analytics. So we had Coupa AIC uh, and brought in analytics and in the last year and a half have also deployed uh, strategic and tactical sourcing through Coupa as well and SpendGuard uh, from an audit control and compliance perspective. So then that, the phrase sweet synergy then actually probably means a lot to you. Koopa was talking about that during the keynote this morning. Your Jabil is living that sweet synergy kind of experience through Koopa. That's right. You know, as we source in Koopa and we can see, you know, are there different behaviors that we need to look into? Maybe suppliers that are bidding at the last minute and winning or you know, less than de desirable number of suppliers coming in or duplicate invoices and being able to really look through that and see spend patterns that we would never otherwise uncover is highly important to us from a compliance standpoint. We've gotten a great value out of that solution. And in terms of value, one of the things I know that was important to you when you were looking for the right technology partner was we, you wanted to involve other folks within the organization across IT, other lines of business. Talk to me about how important that was to bring in that cross-functional team 
to help make the right decision. Yeah, I, that was one of the most critical things that we did. Um, we needed to make sure, especially being a, an, an SAP shop, right? We needed to make sure that we were standing back and really being impartial in our decision and driving a non-biased decision in that RFP process. And so we got uh, our executives together, talked to them about the value drivers and the ROI that we could do if we had all of the right support from the right departments. Um, so that we could avoid resistance as we tried to deploy in such a rapid way. So we brought IT, legal, users together, procurement, and in advance did a balanced scorecard approach to say these were the important factors that we had, whether it was IT infrastructure, whether it was capabilities, to make sure that when we came out of that decision and we picked a solution, we could all look at each other and have a handshake and say it was the right decision for us as a company. Um, and so no departments had pushback at that point because of that approach that we took. That objective approach that you took. That's right. Let's talk about some of the outcomes I, I look at um, actually, let's not. Let's talk about your deployment first, because you guys started with probably your most challenging sites, whereas other folks might go, let's start with the low-hanging fruit and kind of work our way up. Jabel said, nope, we're going to flip the script on that. That's right. So we, we went with what we call an east-to-west strategy. Um, we are heavily concentrated in, in our Asia markets, and so we also wanted to deliver our ROI as quickly as possible and get our spend into the system as quickly as possible. So we went live with 12 sites, um, 11 megabytes, mega sites in China and our corporate headquarters in St. Petersburg in order to get that spend in as quickly as possible and get our ROI delivered. So we started in China and the US, then in a second phase deployed the rest of Asia and then the US and North America and then over to Europe. So we went regional uh, from a time zone perspective um, but also just I say go bold. You know, I hear a lot of people that start small and then grow, but if you want to deliver that ROI and get your money out of that system as soon as possible, go big or go home. I like that, go big or go home. Well, it's like Mike uh, Ebeling was talking about this morning from Not Impossible Labs, commit and then figure it out. And I That's just thought, right. You know what, that's actually brilliant advice because it's probably the opposite that a lot of us, a lot of us want to. We want to be able to figure this out and then go, okay, we can do that. Yeah. And he said, no. Yeah. Do the opposite. Do did the you, opposite. Did you have to get buy-in from, from those cross-functional folks to say, we want to start with our most challenging sites first? Was that a team decision? That was a decision that we did just basically to get that ROI delivered. And we also had a really strong team that still partners with our Coupa admins today that were really invested in getting on to a solution where they can automate and drive control and compliance. And so not only did we involve the team in the solution selection, but also in the global design. So we brought different cross-functional departments together into one location together. We made all of our decisions on how we were going to configure Coupa, so that way, again, all of our divisions and departments had buy-in to how we were going to move forward, and then we went from there. Well, and in that case, everybody feels like they have a stake That's right. in the issue. They, they have a vested interest. That's right. Which they, is critical for these types of large projects to be successful. That's right. So they were involved in the RFP process, so they knew why we were doing it, and they were then involved in the design and, and how we were going to set it up so that they knew that they had a vested interest in how it was going to perform in the end. And then of course there were things that we had to tweak. So we needed to have a design committee that we could come back to and make changes as we needed to you know, make changes throughout the projects. So you don't always get every single decision right the first time, um, but you need to be nimble and make changes fast and get consensus across the, the company. Right, talk to me about some of the outcomes. I know I've seen a lot of stats in your case study and I always love those numbers that always jump out at me Talk to me about some of those metrics-based business outcomes that Jabil is achieving so far. Yeah, so in the last uh, four years, we've had a heavy focus on catalogs. So actually in the last few months, we've gone from 20 to 30% um, by using Coupa Analytics and drilling really into the details and putting really great category strategies in order to drive more catalog penetration. Um, we've got great uh, stats around electronic invoicing, especially in certain countries where people think it's not possible. Right. There's a great change management story we have for what we've achieved in our Asia markets around electronic invoicing. And from an ROI perspective, we were able to deliver 3X our ROI by the end of year two, which we projected would take three years to do, and 7X by year four. So we had a very conservative and achievable ROI that got the buy-in, and then we were able to accelerate it by being aggressive, but also with a great solution, it was easy to then get that done. 
you talk a little bit about the change management that you were able to achieve in the Asian market? Change management is a difficult thing to do. People are resistant to change. Uh, one of the things we've learned in the last two years is sometimes the change comes and there's nothing you can do about it. But how did you affect that change management within that culture in, in the Asia market? Yeah, so with the executive buy-in that we had, because they knew that there was high potential for us to deliver an ROI, we had executive sponsorship that helped us get through some of those barriers. So if we decided not to bring certain users into the system, for example, and there was pushback that they needed to have access, we had executive messaging as to why, from a policy governance and control standpoint, we couldn't break that. So we used our executives' um, voice and their support to do that, but also we brought in a great system that was user friendly and so we didn't get a lot of resistance in, in that sense. So they actually embraced the change compared to the solution we had in place before. So by making the right selection from a user centric company, we also didn't get as much resistance there as well. That's nice, least, the path of least resistance is good, especially if you're not exactly sure if you're going to find it, but verifying that and getting that ROI is, is probably a big, a big win. Talk to me a little bit about, you guys liked Coupa so much, you had such, you mentioned 3X ROI within, you said the first year? With, after year two. After year two, 3X yes. ROI. You liked it so much you decided to become a Coupa partner. Talk to me about yes. that. What does that mean? What are you guys doing as a partner? Yeah, so this is a super, super exciting thing for us to adventure into. So we pride ourselves on, our, our theme is built for practitioners by practitioners. Um, we run this system every single day. We've been running it for years. So my team members are deep in the knowledge and capabilities of Coupa, its functionality, how to manage it every day, how to get the most value out of it, and we want to share that knowledge with other Coupa customers to get the most value out of their system as well. So whether that's optimization and helping them get more out of their system, or whether it's roadmap or assessments in, in our perspective, or even doing that new implementations, we're excited to venture into that area of services with Coupa as a partner. Are you, have you guys started doing that yet? We, th today is our, this is our our first uh, Coupa Inspire as a partner, which is exciting, and we literally just got started in the last few months. Um, so we are working on getting our first customer here, hopefully very shortly, and I've had a lot of really great conversations with customers at the uh, show so far. That's one of the great things that Coupa took the risk to bring us all together, because there's they have a phenomenal community, of which you guys have been a part now, you said, I believe, about seven years, but there's nothing that replaces the connections that you make in, in the community that is grown from doing events like this. I imagine that you've gotten to talk with a lot of prospect, yes. prospective customers who, what, how did you do this? This seems like, like an impossible feat that you've gotten to share with them. This is doable, here's how we did it. That's right, so we, fortunately I've been at previous Inspires as well, so I've gotten to talk to people that I haven't seen in a couple of years, which is always exciting. I've been able to talk to customers that I've done you know, referrals for with Coupa before that are now Coupa customers, and yeah. we get to talk about that, and also those prospective customers, and, and helping them know that it is doable, it is achievable, you can get consensus in a decentralized company where all the sites, if you have lots, lots of sites and countries have their own autonomy, you can do it. You can do it fast, you can do it effective if you take the right approach. And so it's exciting to get here and share that opportunity and, and our adventure and our journey with, uh, with Coupa and the journey is only just beginning. Right. What are some of the, the things that you are excited about in terms of the innovations that they were, they've announced at the event? I know Coupa is very much symbiotic with its customers, that the community very much generates a lot of the direction in which the technology goes, but what are some of the things that you've heard announced that you thought, yes, they're going, the right, they continue to go in the right direction? Yeah, so there's some actual foundational capabilities around things like payment agreements and group carts and things that actually we've contributed through either customer cabs or VP sessions uh, with design, just doing you know collaboration together. Um, but I'm also excited to see some of their price benchmarking that they're doing so that we can know how well are we doing. Um, and from our pricing standpoint, and also where they're going with supply chain. I'm excited to see where they're going with that. Being a big supply chain company ourselves, um, we're hoping that that all turns out to be something that we can uh, innovate with Coupa on, and hopefully you know, have in the future as well. Well, they, as they said, Rob said it to me just an hour ago, they are tip of the iceberg. But what it seems that you've become, Heidi, yourself and Jabel, is really kind of an influencer within the Coupa community. We appreciate you coming by the Cube, sharing with us what you've accomplished and how you're expanding your Coupa partnership 
into helping other companies. Great, thank you again for having me today. My pleasure. All right. For Heidi Banks, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Coupa Inspire 2022 from Las Vegas. Stick around, my next guest joins me momentarily.